Sounding busy there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it, I guess this is everybody. How many people are there? We got a few people. Oh, Greece. So oh, now I know what you're, who you're talking about. Sorry. <laughs> I just finally saw your name there. Like, oh yeah. Let me put one and one together there. When I saw the G Morriso on there, I thought it was uh, George Ann. Oh wait, from, from the from the Fort William. Yeah. All right, so what is it? Three three twenty. Give us a 10, 10 minute transition. Yeah, it took me a while to get in here. Then all of a sudden I thought I was in the wrong wrong group there. It took me a while to log into all this, trying to figure it out. I'm just like, where's the link? <laughs> the other one this morning. Popped up automatically, and then somebody said it's in the other one. I'm like, hey, what other? <laughs> Popped up automatically, and then somebody said it's in the other one. I'm like, hey, what other? <laughs> All right. So I guess we get started. I forgot I'm, I'm the facilitator. <laughs> I'm just sitting here like waiting. Uh, all right. So we're just got Bib Boon for, for our season. So uh, uh, trying to remember what I said there earlier. Um, so we want to create, uh, do some brainstorming on uh, which month, which month of Bib Boon we want to focus on. When does winter start? Then? December, January, February? Yeah, December. December, January, February. So December is, uh, I think one word I remember was uh, Great Spirit Moon. And then January is uh, Little little spirit moon and it was i know there was a few words for that one is uh december little spirit moon and january's uh green spirit could be i think so brain my uh <laughs> my brain my I'm brain froze. <laughs> 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 See if I have it here. Oh yeah. So yeah, Jan January is the Gichiman uh, Dogizis, the Great Spirit Moon, and uh, some communities also say Abtagizis, Halfway Moon, and then February, some communities use Migizewe uh, Gizis, the Bald Eagle Moon. And some communities use Name Bene Gizis, the sucker moon. And then uh, December is the Manado Gizis, little, little spirit moon. 
We got the choice of three. Did they say February? Let's see. Let's just go with, uh, we'll just uh, see one of those. Oh yeah, winter. I like to fish in the winter. There we go. So uh, you want to focus on fish fishing? Yeah. So, so what month again? Uh, so what did we see? January was. Kichimani togi is The big. Okay. So the big spirit moon. All right. And what was the uh, question there again? All right. So we got uh, we got our, our moon. We'll go with that January then. And. Uh, so that's that's April. No, January. I did. I just did April. So January. Uh, so what group we want to focus on? Do we want to focus on a specific age group? Little kids, medium-sized kids, big kids. Let's do little. Little guys, all right. Little ones. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, so the season, is there any kind of uh, teaching that uh, anybody, uh, anybody like to share that, uh, that, they, uh, that they use? Um, I was just like just listing in general, like uh, just for activities for winter. So listening. Yeah. No, I was listing a bunch of activities oh, just listing. in general. <laughs> I was just like thinking in my head because like you can use them all for different ages, but storytelling okay. you can use that all the way across. Okay. But I know like in the winter time, there's only certain stories you can tell too. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, there's some of them you can't say during the winter time. Only certain ones. Oh, that's that's a good that's a good one right there. Only winter. Um, I was also told about snowshoeing that certain designs were actually, um, the family crest. Is oh, that yeah. true? I don't know. I'm just learning all these new things. Oh. Okay, I just learned that recently because I was told that the crest on the snowshoe, it was actually a way that people were able to tell apart which families were where for trapping. Oh, oh my God. Team. Did not know well, that. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. I never stop learning. <laughs> exactly, yeah. season teaching that was is, is that our moon teaching <laughs> season teaching value teaching has yeah, value mm -hmm. all right so let's uh brainstorm our, our activities so ice fishing snowshoeing storytelling so at that time of the year too it's uh uh, the lakes freeze over. Shut in. Ice freezing.
I'll put snowshoeing where? Snowshoeing. Trapping. Trapping. Trapping beavers, snaring rabbits. Beavers, rabbits. Fish nets. Fish nets. When you still still fishes with nets in the winter. And yeah, that's right. That would also be the time of teaching uh, winter survival skills. Survival. Like uh, just a basic skill, like learning how to make a fire. I did that with my students uh, through through Zoom. So I actually took them out in the, in the bush and it's a good thing I was able to pick up a reception. So I took them right out and kind of like, and then just did each steps with them. You know, what kind of uh, branches to look for, what like dry branches, leaves, birch bark, and how how you set up a fire. So pretty much like basic uh, survival skills in the winter time. Okay, that's good. So fire me in the bush, branch, branch, uh, tree type. So eating and sewing. So sweat lodges, fasting. Sweat lodge, fasting. Fasting camp here. Say that one again. Did you say bingo? <laughs> bingo is all, all year round. <laughs> what about drum teachings as well? Teachings about the drum um, and new beginnings in January. Especially with students having new ideas, new ways of approaching their self-identity. Every January is a new beginning, so just honoring that new moon, the new year, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have trapping in there somewhere? Uh, let's see, somebody mentioned trapping beaver. <laughs> Storytelling. Yeah, that's the, that's the one there she was mentioned about uh, only certain stories can be told mm -hmm. when there's snow on the ground. What about two yeah. water teachings? Water teachings. Uh, the other thing we did was uh, winter medicine picking. Sure. Kind of like how to uh, process the medicines and store them away for the winter. Nice. Yeah, okay. Let's see those are mittens, hats. Yeah, ask a question about the medicines. Um, I was thinking of doing something like that with the kids. Would I like if I want to start like doing sema, starting to grow sema inside, would it be good to do it like uh, um, January, February, and then take it out when you know May, June? Like transplanted outside. Anybody have an experience in that? Well, we uh, we tried that a uh, couple of winters ago before the before the pandemic shut everything down. We had those uh, uh, roost to harvest uh, 
brought over some uh, hydroponic uh, growth, growing uh, those gr growing towers. Yeah. And, uh, so I was curious. I said, uh, I said I'd, I'd like to try this. And uh, so we we grew we grew some sage, we grew some uh, sema, and uh, so we had a little, nice little harvest there. We just gave it out to whoever whoever wanted it. I'm actually uh, growing tobacco too, and there I I had one growing, and I think I those Asian beetles in my house ate one of the leaves off my tobacco plants, and then oh. it froze because we have so much snow up here right now. So like I think they would be, I think it would be a good. That's actually a good thing you said that because I'm trying to grow earlier so that my plants will grow bigger because we're so behind in the growing stage because through the sun. So. It's interesting that I think we do as Indigenous people need to grow our tobacco and, and grow our traditional medicines because it's something that I think that I personally have neglected. And so like learning it, it's it's different stages of the tobacco plant. I've been trying to learn the different stages and it's really a process and they're so small, the seeds. You literally have to grab one of those seeds per pod. Like you can't add more than one seed. I tried to add more than one seed, but they grew in different ways and it didn't work. So this year I'm just trying to do one seed per pod. So they grow different differently that helps helps so what time roxanne what time of the, the year like would you start putting in the pods like um I, I would start now. This is a good time. But when you get to June, you start fighting the flowers. And so that's when you have to start start cutting all the flowers off because the flowers will start taking over the leaves. And so you have to constantly fight with the flowers until about August and then you kind of let the flowers grow and then the leaves will be so beautiful they're very sticky and then you have to let them dry and the process of hanging them but by the end oh all the elders just love it they smell it they look at it and it's more for like I find like we can't I can't go buy it or I can't get that to traditional tobacco. So I just more want to provide it for the community that I'm in. And they, if they need it, it's there. So this year I'm trying to do a few garden beds where we can get a lot more tobacco and stuff. So I'm hoping, and the bees love them. The bees love them more than sunflowers. It's really weird, but they love them more than sunflowers. <laughs> yeah. 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 So another important one is the full moon teachings, because that's pretty much all year round, but we still need to take the, you know, the, the teachings outside during that time, during full moon. And there's also other teachings that come with that, such as the moon time teachings, the vision quest for the boys, the rites of passage. Um, um, we did a list of um, of all kinds of activities for each month in our, uh, we have a language team in our school. So we get together uh, uh, quite often and meet and talk about how, um, you know, setting up our curriculum, our planning, our activities um, for each month. So those were all the activities we would do at that time in, in January. That's what we listed. And plus also the seven teachings, the seven teachings, like we focus a teaching every month. So we kind of uh, spread out uh, the uh, uh, seven teachings throughout each month, even though, you know, we live, the, we live by those teachings every day, but we do kind of like focus a teaching during that month and we do all kinds of uh, activities for that teaching, for that specific teaching. So like for this month, uh, it's courage. So I've been uh, uh, teaching that um, the courage and making sure the kids understand what that means. And then also the, the lesson plans, the activities that come with those teachings. <laughs> Yeah, ours is different over here, Lil. Is yeah. um, right now we're doing Saba.
respect uh, actually Buffalo, sorry, not the sub. Saba was the honesty. That's a pretty good list here. Uh, just been uh, writing down as a hearing people talk. So the last part of it was to pick one of those and then just kind of uh, list, make a short list of, uh, you know, uh, what what are the activity, like the actions, you know, whether you're running or, or, or working, working with your hands or or uh, the objects you need, your materials. I guess this year was a big challenge for everybody is, you know, like with the COVID and the shutdowns of schools and stuff, like yeah. us in Metogamy here, uh, we didn't get back to school until late January after Christmas, and then we were online. And uh, the cultural kind of got pushed aside because we had to catch up on the other curriculum that needed to be, you know, because there's educational law that you have to, like, the curriculum you have to pass or you have to teach. Right? But uh, yeah, I had to condense in the last month and a half, um, uh, December, January, and pretty well February, uh, some teachings. Just to give you a little history of what I had to go through. I just wanted to, to add on there. I think it really worked out for me because I did a lot of my teachings through Zoom. So because I live out in the country, I was able to take the students outside and teach them through Zoom, where I actually took them in the forest and and for luck, like I said, I was able to pick up internet. So I was able to take them out and show them the trees and show them, uh, you know, the, the paths, especially when I did rabbit snaring. So I was able to show them, you know, what the tracks look like, what the trails look like, how to set up the, you know, the snare itself like the whole process, the whole steps of uh, teaching um, the students how to snare a rabbit. And I did get some rabbits. I was able to uh, snare some rabbits. And again, I took them through um, processing the rabbits. And then even like through all the steps, skinning it uh, with the fur, cooking it, everything. <laughs> so it really worked out for me. I really I wish you were my teacher, teaching. Lillian. <laughs> you seem very knowledgeable. So keep doing what you're doing. I, I love that. I, I love like the humbleness of some teachers, like, and that's how children learn is through the humbleness of teachers and, and how you approach, how you approach yourself, you know, and like learning from, even though we are put in these situations where like with COVID, but we have to learn to adapt. Like right now, all us Indigenous people are on this platform. So that's an accomplishment in itself I think you know learning these technology ways but we can do it it's just a process of how we do it you know and with our kids we have to let them know that it's also we're learning with them we're not learning any above or below we're learning with them as well because we all haven't experienced this too so yes yeah. and the other thing I wanted to mention with that was uh, because the kids are watching me right so I'm taking them to this trail in the bush and yes, I could see, I could see parents in the background too. Yeah. They're kind of like in there with their, um, with their students and they're watching. They're them. learning. Exactly. And that's how we have that relationship, right? Cause we're like that generation that have to build those gaps in between and pull each other together, but in a good way, you know, like approaching it in a good way. Yeah. You're everybody's teachings are different and respecting each other's teachings. That's important too. Yeah, you got you. That's one of the biggest advantages of getting together like this is learning from each other. 
um, you know, listening to Lillian there with her, with her Zooms. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, I wish I could have, uh, was able to do that here. Um, unfortunately, I was, had to be an EA for other things. But uh, great, that's awesome. How does everybody feel with the language fluency of their students or not students, say guardians or parents that maybe you work with or whatever, does everybody find that the fluency is still beginner level or are you able to communicate a little bit of the language with your profession or like occupation? Well, I found that most of the, some of the children that I've talked to um, um, point out that uh, when they try to speak the language, that they get, uh, they get teased by other kids and it discourages them from uh, speaking the language. And it's kind of a sad, sad thing to hear some kids uh, share that with me. Because every once in a while, I'll ask them, like, how do you, how do you like uh, learning the language? So, yeah. Um, so what, so what do you do about that? Like, how do you, how do you approach that in a simple way? Well, for me, like, I guess, like, all I, all I can do is uh, to keep encouraging them. Yeah, and I find that they don't have that like bouncing off their parents either. So when they're trying, they're, so I find it very difficult. I even try to speak with any elders and they like kind of laugh at me too. Like they laugh and then they don't respond back when I'm trying to speak the language to them. So even me as an adult, I get laughed at as well. So you're right, like how do we kind of try to make it more of a, like an acceptance of speaking it fluently and like giving that encouragement to parents. And yeah, it's a very difficult situation because we can try all we want, we can do that. But if we don't have the engagement of parents with children going home, how do we keep that fluency? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if I can make another quick comment, um, I like, Lillian was talking about when she, when she was uh, taking the kids on the land to uh, show them how to do uh, rabbit snaring and uh, taking them through that process, right right up to uh, hooking the rabbit and all that kind of stuff. It, it brings me back to something like when I was when I was growing up and how my grandpa used to take me out into the bush like at this time of the year, when the, well in January because we're we're talking about January, right? as a month that we're picking for our, our lesson. So at that time of the year, when the snow is high, he would take me through the through the bush with, with snowshoes. And it would take maybe like about two or three times of going through the uh, through an area with snowshoes. And uh, and then you just walk on it after without the snowshoes and you can get your firewood. And you can go to places where you wouldn't normally you wouldn't normally get to in the summertime, you know, because it's easier to get through the sticks and whatever, the little trees and whatnot. And you can get those those kind of that kind of <laughs> Hello. Bonjour, Manoa. <laughs> I left everybody in the dust there. I'm sorry about that. I accidentally clicked you off and I went off into the Ethernet. Yeah, I think everybody did. Everybody was saying they had to get off there. They had a no patient on there, right? Yeah. But well, so wasn't you, Will? It wasn't meeting. you. It wasn't your stories. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we're going to go back to the main room anyways, or right? Yeah, exactly. So everybody back to the main room. And I'm sorry if I didn't get to some of your uh, stories. Martha is there and uh, a couple other people. But hey, we'll Jerry, go back to the main room. You are in the main room. I am in the main room, of course. Everybody's in the main room now. Perfect. Here we go. <laughs> so everybody's here, and I just continue. Is that the deal? 
think we're looking for our uh Mary with the uh with the review of the sessions oh okay and i lead that right away or is david going to be here to do that <laughs> ah here we are hello bonjour, bonjour. bonjour from my from the, the summer group what, what a great time we had in our breakout session there david thank you so much for uh generating so much uh, laughter <laughs> we had a great time uh, I, i'm the one that left the group early and I, I left my whole group back in the in the bush and they had to come and find me so that that pretty much sums up how i would make out in in the, the summer camp <laughs> so they have to put their tracker skills to to you <laughs> that's right so thank you to everybody who came out to uh, to the summer group. And David, uh, did you want to lead this somehow? And, and uh, oh sure. So uh, um, my group, I was just taking notes as uh, as people were typing stuff and chatting. So uh, our group was big one winter. So we uh, we we there's three three months of winter. So we picked uh, uh, Gizis, which is the big spirit moon, and. Uh, our, our focus audience was going to be uh, the little ones, uh, K to four. Uh, so our season teachings was. Uh, uh, oops, there's a duck coming in. Where's my gun? Uh, uh, so our our season teaching uh, was um, focused for little ones uh, for uh, uh, listening. Uh, and explaining that uh, uh, Anishinaabe stories, uh, traditional stories, uh, are only told in winter time, so it would be the perfect time for little ones to uh, hear those stories. And uh, some of the other teachings uh, uh, that were brought up was about uh, winter time when we use snowshoes. Uh, uh, in some of the uh, traditional areas, uh, people would uh, uh, design their snowshoes. Uh, with uh, a certain way so that uh, they would be able to identify each other, who, what family they came from or which territory they belong to. So that was pretty neat. So it was like snowshoe identification. Uh, and our, va our value teaching uh, was about, uh, because winter uh, is like uh, a new beginning, like New Year's. Uh, so uh, it's, it's an uh, opportunity for uh, different age groups uh, to reflect on uh, you know, uh, what they would like to see uh, in their life in the, in the coming year. Um, and then we started uh, brainstorming our, our list. We had a pretty big list. I wasn't too sure if we were gonna stop. Uh, so we had ice fishing for, for that time, um, trapping uh, beaver, snaring rabbits, under ice uh, net fishing, uh, hook, uh, hook and line fishing, uh, uh, again, uh, teaching uh, young ones uh, fire safety uh, or, you know, uh, around the fire, where, where the stories will be told, uh, doing, doing some short walks with the little people in, in the bush, uh, them uh, names of trees, uh, teaching them some basic uh, sewing skills, uh, beading, working with big beads probably. Uh, they learned uh, some uh, stories about sweat lodge, fasting. They get to uh, learn, learn about the drum. Um, and they also, even in the wintertime, where the kids uh, uh, learn, learn about water teachings, uh, winter, uh, winter medicines. Uh, uh, with, with the assistance of adults, uh, they learn, learn how to make... Uh, or get to watch how to make mittens, hats. Um, uh, also teachings about winter, uh, the first snow wash, uh, frost scraping, uh, making moccasins, uh, winter, winter growing. Uh, we talked about uh, you know, if, if it was possible to grow stuff indoors rather than outdoor, outdoors at, uh, where it's too cold. Uh, Full moon teachings, uh, inside, outside, uh, passage rites for girls and boys, uh, 
teachings about the moon time, seven grandfather teachings. And, uh, but when we got to our last task or the, of the choose one, uh, we were kind of, uh, uh, focus our focus activity we were kind of uh, talking about the impact of the pandemic you know I put limitations on what we could do in terms of uh, uh, doing a lot of these activities but luckily uh, we had uh, uh, one, one one person in our group uh, talked about her experience of using zoom and going out uh, while the kids uh, you know were uh, watched on the screen uh, as she went out to set uh, snares uh, and, and catching rabbits uh, out, out on the trails and uh, and showing on Zoom uh, the kids that were uh, uh, watching, learning how to skin a rabbit and, and cook it. And they said that not only were the kids uh, uh, watching the Zoom activities, there were also other family members to, uh, tuning in. So that was, that was great. Uh, so, uh, so it was uh, neat to hear that story, uh, showing uh, that you know adapt, adapting you know uh, to that uh, limitation of uh, not, not being able to get the kids out, you know, uh, just using using technology as as best as, as best as it can can be used. And then we talked about uh, where, where's where's the where's the language at, you know, in terms of fluency, uh, some of the issues around. Uh, you know, uh, discouraged, getting teased, and uh, oh, we uh, we always always must be vigilant to keep encouraging, uh, you know, uh, uh, po positivity positivity in, in, in learning learning language. Right. Well, so, how long was your session? Because uh, we didn't get near <laughs> halfway here. <laughs> that kind of stuff. All right, we're going to switch over to Emma, and Emma, you look after. Was it autumn and fall? Autumn, the guagen, uh, right. autumn. So. We picked rising moon because um, it uh, we we think that it it's it uh, encompasses both uh, September and October, uh, which are prime autumn months. And um, so we came up with a, a quite a good list as well of activities. Um, our list centers around harvesting. So whether we are gathering the rice as rising moon implies, um, or we're gathering sap um, during a hunter's festival. So going out and gathering meats and brought back. So having a festival aspect of, of also learning how to process what is gathered. Uh, we talked about gathering the porcupine quills in, in autumn because it's better quality. Uh, and the dyes uh, for various activities, um, harvesting the vegetables um, and learning how to preserve them, um, as well as preparing for winter, such as preparing fishing nets, uh, repairing and preparing that. So we did focus a lot around the harvesting aspect of fall, uh, a daguagan. Um, and then also what you do with what has been harvested. We don't just drop the ball there. <laughs> um, so we didn't have as clear um, grade level or specific um, items as you had listed so clearly and eloquently just there, David. My apologies. Um, so we tried to focus on ricing itself. We thought it would be a really cool activity, although we didn't have too much experience with those who were present. Um, what we were, uh, what we, what uh, our group did have is one very connected Harriet. Uh, thank you very much, Miigwech, who shared um, a link to an amazing resource of, um, all about harvesting rice and it had language aspects and it had all of that built right into it it was very well done um if possible could i have her share that link one more time in the chat for everybody um we also talked about um seeing what is what has been done um in the past and comparing that to harvesting present so 
present. We use big machines and it cuts the, the rice stalk and it sucks up all the grains of rice. Where, whereas the traditional harvesting, they use very light, gentle tools, um, collect most of, of the, the, the rice and you can get multiple harvests of that same, from that same plant which is far more effective and efficient. And it's really cool how much better um, it worked when you see it as a whole. And that brings me to my next point that we discussed is regarding language. In English, there's generally one way to say a sentence. I saw a duck because we use ducks, apparently. Um, the ducks help us find rice. So, using duck, so I saw a duck, but in the language, um, animals should come first. So um, we learned that um, the sentence order can change. Um, you can say, um, where did I write it? Shishib negewabma. So I saw a duck, where the duck comes first, duck that I saw, or if you do more of a direct translation, it would be Nagi Wabama Shishi, but then we're putting ourselves first. So just different lessons of um, with nature. So we discussed that, which was really cool. Um, we also discussed the favorite part of all harvests, the eating. So preparing the food. So um, great language lessons there where we're preparing the food, but then talking, you know, okay, use this much of this item. And so we're doing the entire instructions on how to prepare the food in the language. And apparently that has been done and um, it might be again, maybe. Putting a little uh, hint, hint on uh, my group, my group members that uh, had talked about that. It was, I think, a, a Zoom sharing initially, and it was, everybody here is like, oh my goodness, that was so cool. So maybe coming again, maybe. Um, so also what was talked about is just the relationship of um, the different foods that you can make that are traditional foods or modern foods and different things. So we just talked a lot about food near the end. <laughs> I think we're hungry. <laughs> Could be. Um, and of course, um, ecosystem. So we tied it into science as well, because with rice, we have the animals, we have the animals that help us find the rice, the shishib, and we have the animals that help create the perfect environment for rice to grow the emic, the, the beavers. So um, I think that covers everything we talked about. Thank you very much, Emma. That's, that's awesome. Seems like you guys covered a lot of ground, <laughs> and you seem organized. That's, that's, but that probably comes with your uh, with your professionalism as educators. Me, I'm just a, an old radio DJ. So, uh, thank you to my group. Uh, thank you to everybody for sharing. I see somebody on um, our chat, uh, Harriet, a visitor to everyone. She says that her she's posted a, I guess a link to um, uh, language games. Um, this uh, unit has all four sessions, oh, I'm sorry, all four seasons with the language games, and you can adjust it to your area and language. So that's on our chat. And of course, everything that you've seen on here remains um, for 30 days. Our group, we studied summer. We discussed summer and what fun it is for the kids. And I think our target group wasn't the kindergarten, um, uh, the, the early childhood uh, uh, students but somebody kids that were a little bit older and we discussed uh different moons of course we we have great discussion about moons a lot of it has to do with uh uh berry month we had uh blooming month we had uh the strawberry moon the loon moon huh <laughs> i like that one um so yeah, we discussed a lot about uh, different types of moons uh, during the summer, and I didn't know that there were that many, but then I, I don't know much. But anyway, so thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge of the, of the moon. 
uh, uh, from June, July, and August. Um, we had all kinds of discussions. Somebody uh, was saying, first of all, um, COVID has kept everybody at home for the last couple of years, so that's been uh, awful. But before COVID, and I guess post-COVID, someone mentioned that uh, community members offered up their own camp their own hunting camp, their own fishing camp as a resource for schools. So community members, thank you for stepping up and sharing uh, your, your hunting camp or your camp area uh, to teach the youth uh, during the summer or winter. But uh, thank you for doing that. That is so awesome that we share our property like that and uh, for everyone to, uh, to learn. We also learned about, of course, your, your most typical um, summer activities which would be uh, canoeing. We discussed uh, a lot about canoeing and how uh, our elders taught some of us how to canoe properly. Um, safety, water safety when you're canoeing. Um, uh, of course, that's important, um, especially when you're fishing, uh, safety around fishing. We discussed how to, uh, how to fish, everything from making traditional hooks to using, I guess, uh, modern day hooks and uh, teaching the youth how to prepare a fish, catching it and pulling it out of the water is fun, but then they wanted to know how do you scale a fish and uh, how do you, you know, cook a fish? And there are different fishes, of course. Uh, we've had a good point I thought was, yeah, schools out, cultural activities. Uh, we had, a, we had uh, I think it was Nancy from Thunder Bay, uh, talked a little bit about uh, geese, and she and I asked her to do a goose call, and she did an awesome goose call. So, uh, David, if you see a whole flock of geese flying low around Nancy, that <laughs> she called them in. Um, uh, camping and hunting uh, camps, uh, discuss that. Swimming. I asked about traditional swimming. Like, <laughs> how how did our people learn how to swim back in the day? You know, when I when I was growing up, of course, we had organized swimming uh, groups, but we had a little discussion about how traditional uh, swimming lessons actually occurred. Um, Cass was part of our group, thankfully, because uh, uh, she had some great ideas about preparing fish leather, how to make uh, uh, fish hooks, fish eggs, a delicacy. Um, we also talked about medicine picking. And uh, that's very important. Uh, birch bark harvesting, that was uh, great. And medical teachings as well. Uh, we had a great story where one, one teacher uh, at, at a summer camp said, uh, the teachers are going out into the uh, bush and we're gonna pretend that we're lost. So the, the topic was search and rescue. And we're gonna hide, but pretend that we're injured. And then uh, the group had to come out and locate them. The group of youth, did locate them in no time whatsoever. And they fashioned up a stretcher out of, I think, pine boughs and, and then uh, then lifted the, the teachers out of the bush and brought them back. Then they even knew how to set the leg that was pretended to be broken. So that was amazing. Boating, water safety, medical activity, first aid, right? That's what we're talking about. Water safety. And of course, storytelling is so important uh, at any time. But wouldn't it be nice if we were all sitting around a campfire right now with David leading us with some storytelling and maybe a Larry Beardy could pop out of the bush and, and tell us a story or <laughs> story is uh, two as well. So that's what we we kind of learned in the in the summer breakout session. So uh, all three of us, thank you so much to Emma and David for uh, for doing that. And I'm wondering if David, if you have uh, some words uh, to wrap up your session or this particular breakout session. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> that was uh, I thought that was uh, a nice uh, a nice group. Uh, a lot of uh, important uh, topics that we covered and shared from different areas, different uh, different points of view, and and somebody had mentioned earlier, you know, your learning learning never stops, and we're we're constantly learning. There's always somebody that has you know, knowledge we're seeking, and uh, um, hopefully, uh, you know. Uh, we can continue uh, on this path of bringing back our uh, our original education back to our students, whether they're in in the communities or or in the towns and cities. 
and uh, once once we reach them, then they can start teaching the rest of the world. You know, this is you know, this this is the original way of uh, how we're supposed to be living on our mother, the earth. And, uh, so I think thank everybody for uh, tuning in and, and uh, sharing. And miigwech, miigwech, bisindawayek, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you.